Hello everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel and happy Easter to you all. My name is Talisha and I also go by Creativity by T and if you are new to watching the channel I do welcome you and go ahead and click that subscribe button and the gray notification bell so that you can be notified of future videos and thank you to all of my new and returning subscribers for your support. So today I will be sharing my first quarter mix which is everything that I made in January. February and March of this year. I did not make a monthly makes video for any of these months so I thought I would just make a compilation video to recap what I made and share them with you and then I may eventually go back to making separate monthly makes videos for the duration of the year if time for permits but I did plan to make this video like at the end of March to share but my four-year-old had a birthday party in March and we had uh, a bowling party so it was done at the bowling alley and after my son's birthday party I needed to transfer photo files from the SD card into the camera by using the computer and I sat down and walked away from what I was doing for a second and when I came back to transfer the files the SD card was gone <laughs> oh my goodness and I about had a cow okay I was so hurt and I was so bothered and I flipped this house upside down looking for it because I have so many memories on that disc that I have not yet saved to like my external hard drive or I haven't got the photos developed or you know family videos all that stuff so I was down for like three days about that in a bad way and I also had photos on this disc to share with you all and because I didn't want to think about it, I just kind of put this video off to the side because I just didn't want to be reminded. However, I did end up finding it and I'm sure my two-year-old put it where it was found. I'm just glad he just didn't throw it away because he likes to throw things in the trash. But anyway, I now have the footage available to share with you so I will go ahead and start by sharing a few things that I made in January and I will go all the way through March and if I have a YouTube video that is dedicated to a specific make that I am sharing I will let you know and I will put those links in the description box as well so I will go ahead and start sharing and please let me know in the comment section below what you think about my makes so starting with January, the first garment that I made is this beautiful sweater that is considered the Simplicity version of the toaster sweater. I made this sweater by using Simplicity 8529 and it definitely measures up to all of the hype that it, this pattern has received. This is a very simple and easy make but the design of the neckline really elevates the look and takes it away from being your typical standard sweater. The other thing that I like about this view is that there is no hemming involved because bands are used for all raw edges and the neckline is folded over. I do have a full review on this make and I also have posted this make on Instagram if you would like more information. Once I made the Simplicity Toaster Sweater, I had a little extra fabric left over but not too little to throw out or enough to make another garment. So because it was super cold during the time that I made this sweater, I decided to make my two little boys neck warmers. Neck warmers are items that I make every year and I think they come in very handy. They even keep you warm just wearing them along with even without a coat. These can be very stylish depending on the fabric that you use and I did not use a pattern to make this. I simply measured their heads and accommodated for a little extra room to get the neck warmers over their head and drafted a pattern from those measurements. And the fabric for the sweater and the neck warmers were purchased from Joanne Fabrics and it is a sweatshirt fleece. For the last item that I made in January, I made this cute and easy to sew sweater dress or shirt dress by using Simplicity 8947. This is a dress that is very practical, it's cute and it's simple, but what I really like about this dress is that it has a very nice loose fit, the lower bands are really attractive and the look of the neckband kind of stands up. 
This dress really kept me warm through the winter and I got a lot of wear out of this. This dress does not include pockets, but I did add pockets to my dress and it made it absolutely perfect. I used a sweatshirt fabric that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics a very long time ago to make this and I do have a full review on this dress and a sew along on my YouTube channel if you would like more information. Lastly in January I partnered with Joanne Fabrics and I made this cute little dress as part of the Black History Month campaign. I used Vogue 9075 to make this dress and it has like the perfect fit. I am a huge fan of a gathered waist skirt on a dress which is why I love it so much. I also love that the bodice has princess seams. This is a very easy Vogue pattern and I have a full review on this dress on my channel as well. Moving on to February I made two different looks for Valentine's Day and the first look that I made is this pretty front pleated peplum top by using Simplicity 9470. I immediately fell in love with this pattern when Simplicity released it. I made my top by using a beautiful red crepe back satin and I love the peplum and the pleats in the front just kind of set it off. While making this top I did record the process and I do have a sew along on my YouTube channel because of that. And I also have a full review on the channel as well. So if you would like more information and details on this top, go ahead and check it out. The next look that I made for Valentine's Day is this cute little dress that I made by using Vogue 9. 344. I made this dress to wear to my husband and I's Valentine's Day dinner and I absolutely love how this dress came out and outside of me making it a little bit too big it was perfect. What I love about this dress is the simplicity of the style and the puff sleeves that makes a statement okay and I do have a full review of this dress on my channel as well. The next make that I made in February is this simple tote bag. I use Simplicity 9308 as a base to make this bag and it is a really nice sized bag that really does a good job at carrying my items. I did modify the pattern by contrasting the lower bottom to jazz the bag up and I used black vinyl for the bottom and duck canvas fabric for the inside. For the outside main fabric I used the Black History Month fabric that Joanne Fabrics released for Black History Month and I really really love the bag. Then I participated in the hashtag Black History Pattern Designers Challenge that was hosted by Natita of So Natural Dane and the first make that I made was this statement sleeve top by using McCall 7508. This is a top that was designed by Nikki of Beauty Is Your Door and I really love how it turned out but the pleats about took me out. <laughs> After installing the pleats I wanted to wear this every day just to get my pleat labor wear out of it. I used the cotton duck fabric that I purchased from the home decor section in Walmart because I couldn't find a yellow like this at Joann's or anywhere but I love how it came out. If you would like to see how many pleats I installed check out the video for this because I do have a full review on the channel where I talk and I show you how many pleats I had to install. The next make that I made for the challenge was this Nikki blazer that was designed by Erin of Style So Me Patterns. I had been wanting to make this for a very long time and I finally took the plunge and did it. This blazer was the very first blazer that I have ever made and I am super proud of it and I absolutely love it and I wear it all the time. I used a blue cotton twill to make this that I purchased from Joanne Fabrics and I wear this like I said all the time and it wears very well and it has a little stretch to it. But for more information I have a full review on the channel. The last make that I made for the challenge was also a pattern by Erin of Style So Me Patterns. I made this Suzanne top which is or was a free PDF pattern. This is a very nice day type of top but it was designed to be a port top for medical patients. When wearing this without a belt it kind of reminds me of a scrub top and it's very relaxed um, but I did use a beautiful houndstooth fabric for my stash that was originally purchased from Hobby Lobby to make this and I have a full review on the channel for this as well. 
so moving on to March, myself and Rochelle of Rochelle.Handmade.Designs collaborated on a sewing series and we titled it Five and Below. This is a series where we only sewed sewing patterns that required only five pattern pieces or less to make. If you would like more information on why we started the channel and just all those details, I will link to it in the cards above and in the description box below. It was a very, very fun series, so I encourage you to check it out because I do have a playlist as well. But going on to share what we made, the first pattern that I made for the challenge was a jacket. I use Simplicity 9189 to make this wrap jacket and this pattern only required three pattern pieces but it was a booger to make because the instructions were the worst sewing instructions that I have ever read. Complete garbage. However, I don't like to be defeated so I persevered and got through making this jacket and I absolutely love it and here are the finished results. The fabric that I used was a French terry and if you want more details on the drama behind this pattern I do have a full review on my channel. <laughs> The second garment that I made for the challenge was this dolman style top that doesn't really look like a dolman to me and it's also considered like a bat wing top but I use Simplicity 1463 View A. I thought this style of top would be very cute for an everyday type of look and I really like how it turned out. The next time I make this I will make it a bit more oversized so that there is more loose fabric under the arms to give it the appropriate look but I purchased this fabric from Joanne Fabrics and it is a double brush knit that came from their spring selection and I do have a full review on this on my channel as well if you would like more information. The next look that I made was this jumpsuit that I absolutely love. This is my second time making this pattern and I made this by using McCall's 8069. There is another pattern that's associated with this make and this is McCall's 7755. So it was McCall's 7755 originally and then they did a revamp and renamed it McCall's 8069. So either of those patterns will work. This is a very cute jumpsuit that only requires four pattern pieces and no closures. I really like this because you can dress this down or you can dress it up or you can make it as relaxed as you want to. It is very versatile. I took this on vacation with me and I got a lot of wear out of this. This pattern also features pockets and if you are watching this video the day I publish it, McCall's patterns are on sale. So I would encourage you to go out and get this pattern because this is a good one. The fabric that I use is this gorgeous blue with bright yellow florals that I purchased from a shop in Mexico several years ago. I do have a sew along for this on my channel and a full review if you would like more details. Then I made this cute little handkerchief style dress by using McCall's 8062 for the five and below series challenge. This is a dress that only required three pattern pieces to make and I love the handkerchief style of this dress. I use this beautiful tan leopard print double brush knit that feels absolutely wonderful and I purchased it from Joanne Fabrics. I will say that after wearing it a couple of times the double brush knit is probably not the best for this style of dress because the fabric kind of sticks on to each other so when it drapes if the wind blows it and it flips up it kind of lands I don't know it, it just kind of sticks together so um, I don't think like I said this double brush is good for this type of drape or it could just be the fabric that I have but I'm thinking an ITY or similar fabric would be more fitting because it would not do that but for more information on this dress I do have a detailed review on the channel then I made McCall 7932 as the last make for the series and this is a cute paper bag skirt that only took four pattern pieces to make and I love this skirt so so much. I love the fabric that I use for this which is a rainbow linen and I love the paper bag look of the skirt. I also love the front and back pleats and I also love that this skirt features a drawstring and casing that gives it the gathered look so it's different from your typical elasticated waist paper bag 
type of skirt. And last but not least, it has pockets. Who, who doesn't love pockets? <laughs> well, that is all for my first quarter roundup. I hope you enjoyed this video and please let me know in the comment section below which makes you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to all of my new and returning subscribers for your continued support and I will see you in the next video. Bye!